it seems like a lot of the problems that we face are not like just totally simplified, but are to cause uh, are caused by just excess free fatty acids. That seems to be like a major cause of all kinds of problems. And then maybe that's why when we increase the stress hormones, that increases the level of circulating free fatty acids. But you know, you, you mentioned it's like someone can not be uh, visibly overweight, but fat can be centered in the liver or in the, in the visceral fat area. And that's what's like very unhealthy as opposed to someone who's just like generally overweight. And I'm curious, like what really drives the fat to go to the liver or the visceral fat too? Cause that seems to be like one of the worst ones. Like, what is it about a healthy body that maybe just like when you get fat, you get like evenly fat versus an unhealthy body, which, you know, I know you focus on the liver, but even I'm also curious, like what really drives the fat towards the visceral fat over the regular subcutaneous fat? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good question. And you can make the case that if we're metabolically healthy and we just force ourselves to eat a lot, we will gain a lot of that like general subcutaneous fat. It'll be a little bit more balanced and um, you won't necessarily see that visceral fat production. But on the flip side, when we see the underlying metabolic problem, that's when we're going to be more prone to both. We're prone both to visceral fat production and like general adiposity, you know, um, body fat and the subcutaneous uh, stores. But when we're looking at the, like, there's, there's no way that we can actually starve our, our organs of fuel, right? So this, this fits right in with what you're saying with the free fatty acids, which is even if we're not eating anything, we're going to produce glucose through gluconeogenesis. We're going to produce fat from, you know, from the fat stores from lipolysis. And that's still going to be circulating. So we might not have all this excess fuel to be stored as the body fat, especially when we're pulling it out from the free fatty acids. But if we have, let's say, a lot of PUFA in our mitochondria and the mitochondria are really inefficient as a result and we're, you know, and we're, let's bring it back to the liver. Like the mitochondria and the liver are, are, you know, liver's picking up the free fatty acids. It's picking up the glucose, the fructose. If it can't run those through the mitochondria, it'll store some as glycogen. But at some point, those glycogen stores are full. And at that point, you're going to start to package it as fat. And in an ideal state, we can actually then send that fat back out, right, in the, in the lipoproteins. But there are also factors that block our ability to send the fat out from the liver, and that involves oxidative stress that basically damages those lipoproteins and prevents them from being sent out. And you see, with, you know, when you look at both sides of those equations, in, of that equation, you then see the, the fat accumulate in the liver. And that is visceral fat. Like, the, the liver, like when we're talking visceral fat, it's any fat accumulation around the organs, and normally the liver is a pretty central point because it's one of like the, the main highways where a lot of fuel is going through. But yeah, it can happen in a state of even like balanced nutrition, like, like not energy excess, as people will say, like not over, over nutrition, which I'm not a fan of that term. But even if someone's not like eating a ton of food, if you have that underlying metabolic dysfunction going on in the organs, you're not, they're not able to effectively utilize the fuel that they need to produce energy and they will start to accumulate fat. And this can be happening again. I mean, I, I think it goes also to this idea that a lot of people blame the under the metabolic dysfunction on the excess calories, right? They're saying if you're eating more, that causes all of these metabolic problems. And I think a lot of times it's the other way around. We have metabolic problems due to nutrient deficiencies, due to PUFA, due to endotoxin, due to heavy metals or pesticides, a lot of things that interfere with our ability to produce energy. We're then not able to effectively convert the fuel to energy. So we have a lack of ATP. That leads to chronic hunger, which leads to then further overeating. And that's where you see this kind of, you know, excess energy, but it's not really excess energy, it's just excess fuel, excess calories coming in. And then you see like, you know, the, the weight gain. But you, even if you don't listen to that hunger and you don't eat more, if you have that underlying metabolic dysfunction, you'll still be storing the, or producing the fat in like the visceral areas from the, the organs. Do you think a more healthy perspective is to look at metabolism uh in a way where you're um you're trying to get the body to produce more energy it seems like that's something i hear you communicate about a lot yeah i, I think that that's generally our central goal and there's different ways we can do it but if we can do it in a healthy way if we're increasing that conversion to energy i think it solves a lot of problems having adequate atp there is what leads us to have good cognitive function good energy throughout the day, you know, that's what leads us to want to go work out. Um, 
And it also, I think, is the resolution to a lot of the problems that we have. You know, you see mitochondrial dysfunction and problems with energy production in every degenerated state. You see it in fatty liver, you see it in Alzheimer's, you see it in diabetes, you see it in cardiovascular disease, you see it just with aging. You know, when they, they do these studies where they look at, uh, like they take cells from older people, el elderly people, and compare them to younger people, and they can be 30% less efficient in terms of their energy production. And so I think that's really the central tenet. I think that's the, the area to focus when we're talking about health.